Alright everyone and welcome back to another video. Now in this video it's going to be very short and sweet. I'll be showing you how to set up WordPress using Docker Compose. Now WordPress is actually really easy to get set up. Uh, I'll be installing it on my Mac um, but the install process is the same if you're just using any uh, Linux distribution. Um, if you are using one of the M1 Macs um, which run on ARM or you're using this on like a Raspberry Pi or something I've got a little um edit i've had to do a little um line that i've added uh, just so the database the, um my sql database will work with on the arm architecture uh, so i'll show you that um but let's pretty much jump straight into it so WordPress really needs no introduction it's pretty much the leading um blogging software uh, that there is uh, as well as just as a general overall content management system for you know um, e-commerce stores, a whole bunch of things. It's pretty much um, the one-stop shop for whatever you want to do in terms of web hosting. Anywho, uh, if we just quickly come down here, like any good Docker uh, file we run, it will have a compose file. So uh, this is pretty much all we want is this line here. As you can see here, what it's running is a, um, a WordPress instance uh with environment variables so setting up your database user uh, which is set up here normally if you um, didn't have these environments you actually set these up during the install but setting them all here means that you don't need to worry about setting all those environment um, variables up uh, in the installation you can just get straight into it which is nice uh, you can see here that we'll be running this on port 8080 and it's been mapped to port 80 on the docker container which is nice and easy and then um these are the volumes, so you can change the mappings to be wherever you like, uh, but you can leave them as default if the main storage is where you're running this from. And the database instance, you'll see a little edit I'll, I'll make. Um, I'll show you this on in my terminal in a sec. But you can see here we're running MySQL. Now you can change this to Maria or whatever database uh, you would prefer, uh, but we will be using a separate Docker container that will be running our backend database for our WordPress. And here you can see here all the environment variables. Now, I'll be running the default ones because I'll be removing this stuff, but please make sure you set these to be unique You're, and make sure they, they match um, each other. But just what I'm getting at is don't, if you're gonna run this in this production, do not use the default uh, environment variables uh, for your instance. Here we've also got, it's gonna create a couple of volumes as well. Uh, so the WordPress volume and the database volume. So this is actually pretty straightforward. So I'll show you what this looks like in a terminal. So this is my terminal here. Uh, so what I normally do is I always make a nice folder directory for my containers. So you can see here, um, I'm in documents. I've made a folder called Docker containers and then I've made a specific folder for my WordPress. Now, if I do LS, uh, you can see that I've got a docker-compose.yaml file in here. Now, let me just quickly run through a couple of these things and um what docker compose and stuff is so we are running this with docker right so you are going to need docker and also docker compose now the simple the easiest way to get this stuff is if you are running on a mac or you're running on windows uh, i'm pretty sure even if you're running on a gui linux uh, you can install uh docker for desktop right uh which is this little thing in the top right that i have here now that will get you started uh, as long as that's running you'll be able to run docker commands via a terminal no problem now if you're running linux gui uh, you want to make sure you have Docker installed and Docker Compose, uh, which can be installed if you're running on like Ubuntu or just be like sudo apt install Docker and Docker hyphen compose. Uh, th so those are the two things you need. Now, Docker Compose allows us to, if I run and open this so you can see, allows us to run this file. So this is essentially a list of build instructions that we're saying, uh, like I've said before, um, we're, we're saying we want to build a WordPress instance uh, with a specific image, which is the WordPress image. And then we are running a database, um, which is MySQL. So make sure you got those, otherwise you won't be able to run this. Now, once you've got that all set up and you've copied this information here into a text file, or uh, in my case, I'm just using Nano so I can actually implement this. Um, what you need to do is pretty much change the environment variables like i mentioned before make sure you're not using the uh, default users default data uh, passwords and stuff like that make sure you change all of that 
Now, if you are running on ARM or anything like that, make sure you specify this line here, which is platform and then um, Linux x86-64 because otherwise it will be trying to look for an ARM architecture image and it just won't play ball. Uh, but with this, uh, seems to be a workaround for us to be able to run this on um, ARM and M1 Max and stuff like that. So that seems to work fine. Um, and that's pretty much it. Just make sure you've got all of that. That's the only line change I had to make was that one there. Um, and again, uh, make sure you change the default environment variables. Now, once you've got that nice and easy, we'll save that file clear that and then really easy and this is why i love docker compose you just do sudo docker uh, actually i don't need sudo That's docker hyphen compose um up hyphen d now since the uh compose file is in the directory i'm running this command what this command is saying is that look for a compose file that will be in this directory everything that's in there please spin it up and hyphen D means run in detached mode, which means all of these containers will continue to run in the background even after I've closed my terminal session and stuff like that. So all you need to do is hit enter. Now, if you haven't run this before, um, it's going to pull those images down, right? I've already pulled those images. I already have them local, and that's why um, I created it so quickly. Now, all we need to do is we've seen that it was running on port 8080. So now let's jump into our local instance um and see if we can hit it so i'm just going to type in here uh, 127.0.0.1 hyphen uh, for 8080 and hit enter and there we are look at that um so i didn't actually have to go through the install um it's it looks like it's still lo using um local volume so let me just quickly clean that up and i'll reinstall it um just so you we're seeing the same thing Cool. there we go so i've just removed the volumes um and just spun it back up and now i'm on the install so you'll be seeing the same thing let me just zoom in a bit there we go so all you need to do is select your language so i'm in new zealand so i will just choose new zealand and hit continue now since you've already done all your database setup you don't need to do it here it's all set up so you don't need to worry about trying to tie in your WordPress front end with your backend database, it's already done via your Docker environment variables, which is very nice and saves time. Now, give your website a name. I'll just call this Tech Docs Demo. Username, I'll just put an admin. And there's a few other things that like you can discourage search engines from indexing the website. Uh, for whatever reason, you might want to do that, but it's okay. Now I'm going to install WordPress. It's this easy. I'll hit login now since it's all set up. So I just go admin, which was my username, put in my super secure password, hit enter. And bam, you now have WordPress installed. Now, if you want to actually run this, um, you know, uh, from your um, home and your home network, then you'll need to expose this port um, onto port 80. Um, and then people can, and then you would need to port forward it on your router so people can connect to it. Now, if you were running this in the cloud or whatever, it would already have a public IP address associated to it. So you would just have to put a domain name on that and you would have a public website. It's actually that easy. Now, the um, I'm not going to do a how-to on WordPress uh, configuration in terms of making your site look pretty. Um, but if you go to Tech Docs Demo or whatever you've got up here, you can actually see your site, right? And then if we come down here, you can actually go post add new and i'll show you that the databases and stuff is working yep whatever is whatever's going on here we're at a title so tech docs wordpress guest so coming in here hello youtube publish publish that let's view that post bam look at that it's here um really it's uh it's, it really is that simple um so how long did that take us? About 11 minutes roughly or around about that. Um, and we have a WordPress website up and running. Um, so yeah, I'll, um, I'll leave a link in the description for the WordPress Docker uh, page um, and just any general information I find. Um, but besides that, that's all you need to get Docker installed. Uh, I'll put a link uh, as well um, to a video I've got on how to install Docker. 
as well um but that should be all you need so uh thank you all very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video cheers bye